Hello everyone, welcome to this video on classical mechanics. In this video, we shall learn what are cyclic or ignorable coordinates and what are their effects on the conjugate or the generalized momentum. So, uh, in the last videos, we had seen the function Lagrange, what is it? What are the corresponding Lagrange equation? And this function, this is a dependent variable which depends upon the generalized coordinates qj, the generalized velocities qj dot and the independent variable time. So these three, uh, this Lagrange, this is a function of these three quantities out of which they are independent, time is independent whereas the generalized velocities, they are derivatives of this generalized coordinate therefore they are dependent on the generalized coordinates. Now. We, are, we shall talk about cyclic or ignorable coordinates. For that, let us suppose our Lagrangian now does not contain one particular qk. Suppose our Lagrangian was something like this, that L is depending on q1, q2 up to qn, where our, uh, we have n independent coordinates qn and then we have these as the generalized velocities and then time and now I am saying that I have, uh, I have uh, this Lagrangian over here this does not contain qk for some k in that case if I take the partial derivative of this Lagrange oh, with respect to this qk this would give me zero so uh, whenever this condition is satisfied for that Lagrangian we say or uh, for that particular coordinate we say that coordinate is ignorable or is cyclic coordinate and that means it does not have any effect on the Lagrangian available. So this is the definition which is used for cyclic or ignorable coordinates. Now let us see what uh, this cyclic coordinate has effect on generalized momentum. So. Uh, and particularly in this case we shall see this for conservative systems. So we have some conservative system which has n number of mass point, points that means some points here having some amount of mass contained within it. These are n in total and in this case let us assume that the force that is obtained from the potential which is not depending upon qj dot and it only depends upon qj's that means the generalized coordin coordinates only so uh, which which is the definition for conservative system as well so the lagrange equation of motion for such a conservative system this is given by simply by this equation the euler lagrange equation and we have n such equations because we have n uh, independent coordinates now out of these n coordinates, let, let me call qk as the cyclic coordinate or the ignorable coordinate. That means the derivative par of uh, partially with uh, the derivative of L partially with respect to qk that comes out to be 0. Now substitute this value over here. I am particularly now talking about when j is equal to k. In that case, this quantity becomes 0. So we only have minus ddt of del L by del qk dot that is equal to 0 for the kth index. And when you integrate this on both sides, you have this quantity equal to some constant. And mo uh, moreover, this constant, this is pk and which is nothing but the generalized momentum as you know already. And this generalized momentum is due to cyclic coordinates that we have introduced qk dot so uh, if uh, so now let us see how i say uh, that this constant is equal to pk so for that uh, let us assume we have we are in cartesian coordinate system so our uh, generalized coordinates say n is equal to 3 and we have q1 as x q2 as y and q3 as z Therefore, now I am calculating this for x1, q or in, in general I am calculating it for q1, right? So, uh, del L by del x1 dot, so this quantity when q is x, so it becomes this one, 
Why? Because the value of Lagrangian that is equal to t minus v, and uh, we have assumed our system to be conservative system. Therefore, the potentials only depend upon q j and not q j dot. Therefore, this del v by del q j dot this would be equal to zero by the definition of conservative system. Thus, uh, this second quantity over here it becomes zero, and we are only left with del uh, t by del x i dot. Now, what is our t? T is half m i v i square for the ith particle, and what is v i? V i is basically the velocity, and which is the uh, rate of change of the displacement. So, this is given by these quantities when we are in three dimension. So uh, when you differentiate this t partially with respect to x i, you will only get these terms would equate to zero, these both, and we are only left with half m i into two x i. So this two cancels with this two, and we are only left with m i x i dot, and this is equal to uh, momentum as you all know. Momentum is equal to m v. so this is the quantity and this is the linear momentum in x direction for this particle so in cartesian coordinates it's easily visualized like this and similarly we can generalize the thing when our system is conservative we have del l by del q k dot that is equal to pk the generalized momentum so uh, we have this quantity in particular we should be focusing on this the uh, on this quantity del l by del q j dot that is equal to p j and you should remember this one this is equal to constant so we can say say that the generalized momentum that is p j conjugate to a cyclic coordinate when we have introduced some cyclic co coordinate q j so in that case our generalized momentum remains conserved so pj is equal to constant when qj is the corresponding cyclic coordinate so this is the theme of the cyclic coordinates moreover we can also have this relation we have just derived this one and the lagrange's equation they are given by this uh, relation now if we substitute this value of pj over here in in place of this one so we have this quantity as such minus ddt of pj uh, so if you take the derivative of this term with respect to time you will get pj dot so you should also remember this relation this is quite important relation which uh, gives a relation between this term qj And P J dot. So the n generalized momenta. Momenta is the plural word for momentum. That means when you have more than one momentum, you call it as momenta. So the n generalized momenta given by P J that is equal to del L by del Q J dot, and this shows that for each Q J we have one P J. That means uh, for every generalized coordinate you have a generalized momentum available for you so you should know this relation and this relation for further course right so now let us uh, see an insightful result uh, we have uh, until now we have studied the lagrangian approach to define any mechanical system and this lagrangian l it depends upon Q J Q J dot and T, where Q Js are the generalized coordinates, and they are independent of each other. Q J dots they are the generalized velocities, and they are dependent upon this Q J, and this time is also independent. So the only independent coordinates they are Q Js and time. But now we can uh, replace this base, uh, this uh, basis set to another basis set Q J P J T. because you have seen that for every qj you have some pj right so we can define another approach known as hamiltonian's approach where this h that is the corresponding 
हैमिल्टोनियन ऑपरेटर वी हैव अंटिल नाउ वी हैव ओनली स्टडेड अबाउट दी लेग्रेंजियन ऑपरेटर सो इन दी अपकमिंग वीडियोज वी शेल सी वॉट इज दिस एच दी हैमिल्टोनियन कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग टू सम लेग्रेंजियन एंड हाउ इट कैन डिफाइन दी टोटल स्टेट्स ऑफ टोटल स्टेट ऑफ एनी मैकेनिकल सिस्टम यूजिंग दिस बेसिस सेट क्यू जे पी जे एंड टी नाउ दिस क्यू जे पी जे टी दे आर इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ ईच अदर सो अर्लियर द प्रॉब्लम वॉज दैट दीज जनरलाइज विलोसिटीज दे वर डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल एंड दे वर नॉट एबल टू डिस्क्राइब द सिस्टम कम्प्लीटली बट नाउ we have for every qj we have some generalized momentum therefore the independent coordinates in this case is this one and uh, this approach is important because it can lead to many uh, an abstract kind of results in classical mechanics as we shall see in the upcoming videos therefore and at the end i i would like to say the mechanical state of the system can thus be described completely provided the generalized coordinates and the generalized momentum they are given as a function of time well that is it for this video thank you for watching